Health and Human Services Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So the agency is taking on a, quote, massive testing and research effort to determine the cause of autism, which will be completed by September. Secretary Kennedy said the autism research effort will involve hundreds of scientists. And on Thursday, he shared his plans with President Trump during a cabinet meeting, which we did air for you while that was underway. To speak more on this and what we know about autism in general, I'd like to bring into the program now Dr. Evan Nadler. He is a former co-director of the Children Obesity Program at National Children's Hospital. Dr. Nadler, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so let's just start with really the basics and what we know about autism because it really has been in the headlines in recent years. So what does it entail? So autism spectrum disorder, which includes many sort of different manifestations of autism. So autism isn't just a one size fits all diagnosis. Um, it's, it's a very complex disease. And what we know is that the recognized incidence or prevalence of autism is increasing. Um, we know that it's thought to be more prevalent in males and females, although that may be just how it's being diagnosed. And we know that people have been trying to figure out what the cause or cause is more likely of autism spectrum disorder might be uh, for decades now. And then kind of piggybacking off of that, why is it so difficult to find the cause of autism? The complex diseases such as autism spectrum disorder and the other sort of neurodivergent disorders, um, they're never really caused by one thing. They're generally thought to be what's called a multi-hit model, meaning you need to have a genetic predis predisposition to the problem, and then you need an environmental exposure of some sort, and then you need that exposure to actually happen at the critical time period where the susceptibility from the genetic difference can be expressed. So when you're talking about the brain, like autism, the brain develops in the first trimester of pregnancy. So the, that environmental insult or whatever you want to call it could happen anywhere between uh, first trimester, later in pregnancy, or the early postnatal period. And so you can imagine how difficult it would be to sort out the different uh, potential environmental influences that could be the, you know, the, the, the main cause. Talk to us about the timeline of diagnosing someone who is on the spectrum with autism. At around what age is that diagnosed and what do doctors look out for? A good question because autism spectrum disorder can actually be diagnosed at pretty much any age. Um, and you see more and more women actually who are being diagnosed later in life because they just weren't uh, they just weren't assessed for that possibility uh, any time previously. So the you know the things that we look out for are generally um, subtle differences in the beginning, although uh, people who have, let's say, uh, developmental delay, so not meeting their milestones as they're going through infancy uh, uh, are are more easily diagnosed. Uh, but because autism is such a diverse, what do we call a phenotype, meaning it, it looks very different in different people, it can be difficult to diagnose and, and thus it's often diagnosed somewhat later in childhood or even into adulthood. So I just wanna make sure that I have this correctly because as you were talking a little bit before saying when the brain develops uh, within the first few months of pregnancy, to be able to diagnose autism is not something that you could technically see during a pregnancy versus some other diseases that, for example, a woman pregnant with a child, you can diagnose other kinds of variables. Correct. Um, the, you know, you, you can't really assess brain function until the baby's born and, and you see how the baby's brain is working. But um, you might be aware of that study uh, that just came out in The Lancet recently that showed that uh, mothers who have gestational diabetes or pre-gestational diabetes 
have a higher risk of having an infant that has uh, neuro neurologic differences or neurodiversity, including autism spectrum disorder. So it does make you wonder whether the insult that we're looking for is prenatal or postnatal, or maybe it can be either or both. It's very interesting there. And the fact that Secretary Kennedy is now trying to really fund all of this research, it really just kind of shows how much we still don't know about this itself. Let's go back to that and the fact that RFK Jr. has said that by September they will know a cause. Now, what are some of the challenges or complications going forward when tackling uh, this major kind of undertaking that, as you said, for decades people have been trying to figure out the cause already? Yeah, so I would never uh, advocate putting a timeline on science. Science is unpredictable, and you never know what you're going to find until you start doing the studies. Um, so I think by putting a timeline out there, it puts a it puts pressure uh, on the scientists to deliver. And certainly, I think it's going to make folks skeptical that the answers that are found in that short period of time are actually the real answers versus ones that were um, sort of uh, pressured by the administration or by um, the scientists themselves. Um, so so to, to the levels of evidence, so there's a whole um, different level of evidence that is required to sort of show that a, something is a cause of something else. And those types of studies usually take much longer than uh, six months. And given the fact that we don't know a cause to autism or a definitive one, I feel that, uh, or I think that some pregnant mothers would be asking themselves, well, what can they do to make sure that their child is as healthy as possible? Is there anything they can really do? Yeah, so the answer to that is for sure, yes. You can definitely, well, first of all, go see your uh, obstetrician. Get the appropriate uh, obstetrical care, prenatal care, take your prenatal vitamins, and Again, especially uh, with respect to the study that just came out of the Lancet, you, you want your metabolic health to be optimized probably even before you get pregnant. So what does that mean? That means uh, pay attention to your diet. It means um, exercise the recommended amount if you can. Uh, it means get your other health problems, including any metabolic problems like diabetes or obesity, uh, under control, or at least uh, start treatment for those types of diseases, and just try to optimize your health, because obviously your health is going to impact the baby's health. And then finally, Dr. Nadler, before I let you go, another question that some mothers may be having. If their child is diagnosed to be on the spectrum of autism, what are some of the steps that they can take to make sure that their child still succeeds in life? That's very important and i'm glad you brought that up because it's not a um the diagnosis doesn't necessarily mean that your child can't be as successful as any other child what it does mean is that you might need some different sort of support services especially during early childhood development and you need to be cognizant or or pay attention to both as a parent and then you know the support system that's around the child that the child has some neurological differences or, or neurodivergence and, and some of the cues that might seem totally obvious to you uh, may not be totally obvious to that child. So you need to try to help them through some of the situations that may come up that people with autism spectrum disorder uh, historically have problems with. Dr. Evan Nadler, we certainly appreciate your time here at Live Now from Fox and talking about this that a lot of people really do have on their minds, so much so that Secretary Kennedy has already brought forth that he is working hard with the Health and Human Services Department there to learn more about autism and what it causes. But of course, we'll be checking in with you soon as we follow this progress. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. And anytime you want me back, I'm happy to talk about this, this topic. Of course. You take care.